Hey guys, so this video is going to be labeled as like a miscellaneous electrical video thing and uh, also if you came to this video looking for tips on how to use a condo for wiring uh, there will be some tips in there. It's not going to go into an extreme amount of detail but it is going to show you some pointers of how to run the wire and do the actual wiring. We're using half inch EMT for all this. Uh, we're going to run about four circuits I think it is. I picked up this line to put up here since sometimes I'll do a high voltage experiment. I thought that'd be kind of neat to have in here. My disconnect switch, if you remember from the before, will be set up here. Ran off a 30 amp 220 breaker just for doing the testing and uh, videos and stuff with 220. It's always handy to have that. Um, just a breaker for it. We have various receptacles and uh, fittings for the half inch EMT. Uh, got a 50 foot roll of uh, wire. Uh, this is four conductor wire. That's all they had in stock. So the red, the red wire is not going to be used. Red wire, this is a, got red, black, white, and green. The white looks yellow, but it's actually white. Um, so that's uh, the red just going to be left in there just in case we ever want to add something else. We've got an extra wire to work with. Uh, in case we need to run something 220 or something, change things around, you know. Uh, but what we're, let me just kind of walk you through what we're going to be doing. So right over in here somewhere, I want to mount this. So it has uh, two receptacles here. It's always handy to have some receptacles on the workbench. We are going to have power strips mounted on the workbench. There's going to be outlets ran on, on the wall behind the workbench. The way they can just plug in. You don't have wires stuck everywhere. The EMT down below here into a a small box here, just have an extra plug in. Uh, then it'll be an elbow going underneath it and shooting over to the two uh, plug ins for that. So we're going to have two 120 circuits wired up. The first one is going to be the double box over here on the left of the breaker box. And the second circuit is going to be the uh, outlet for the power strips. So it's just two separate circuits. Uh, it's not going to be an extreme amount of load. And if we have a problem with the breaker kicking, we'll change things up later on and also we'll be mounting the uh, the switch box as I said and we're also going to run the uh, wire for the welder as well I'm not quite sure where I'm going to put that at but it will be around here somewhere I'm not quite sure yet but uh, let's just get started and like I said I'm not going to show every single step of the way I just want to kind of hit and miss on it but so I want the uh, outlet box approximately you know eight or ten inches away from the uh, breaker box, you don't have to be right on top of it or too far away from it either. Actually I think we're just going to go at 6 inches, there's no need for it to be real far away from it. you got several different ways you can cut this. I'm just going to use a regular uh, tubing cutter. This one don't work the best as you've seen in the copper pipe video because the rollers are actually locked up on this and I keep forgetting to get a new one. Uh, This is the best way. You can use a hacksaw or a sawsaw or uh, anything that will cut metal or chop saw. You just have to remember to use a deburring tool inside because you don't want that, that sharp edge in there to cut the wire or anything. Okay, so we're going to knock out this top knock out. This is the type of uh, connector we're going to use. The pipe just fits in there and you tighten the screw down. This is a bonding screw. Um, we'll be more talk about that here in a little bit, but you actually don't necessarily have to have a, uh, a grounding wire, like the green wire in this case. Um, I always do anyway, just extra protection. And down pretty tight because it'll actually ground through this and the code actually recognizes it like that. So that's pretty much uh, how the pipe or conduit will connect. It'll just go in here and lock down. And this will be the same for like the elbows. You see here the same thing on that. And if for some reason you need to you know splice in a piece and get these couplers and it'll go in halfway just like that and tighten both screws and the same difference. 
So that's how uh, all that works. We will be running the green ground wire as well, just as extra protection. It's always the best thing to do, in my opinion. I'm going to go ahead and get the uh, panel removed on the breaker box. We'll look at that. If you need more information about breaker box wiring, feel free to look at the box. Uh, look at the video I made a couple uh, made a while back on uh, how to install a, a new uh, breaker box. I'll give you some pointers on that. So the way I'm going to do this, this is going to be locked down. I'm going to go and put the fitting in the breaker box and lock that down. That way we can get the positioning on this. That way nothing's going to move. Whenever we're not we're not guessing that and have to cut another piece of conduit or drill more holes in the center block. So let's uh let's skip a couple steps on the camera and I'll take the cover off the breaker box and we'll go from there. And just a reminder, anytime you get the power the, the panel cover off, your bus bars that the breaker connects to are hot if your power is still worn. So you always want to de-energize the panel before you start doing anything like this. Another thing I wanted to mention, these screws that go in here, they're a certain, they're like a pre-cut, they're like a pre-determined length. So the screw only go in so far, so you won't dent the pipe too much. You just want to take it in until you can't take it no more like that, and you're good to go. Now we still got a little bit of place so we can level it and go ahead and mount the box. Now, one thing I'm not doing I'm not doing an offset, so you see there is you know, space behind it, and uh, it's really hard to do offset, especially on something short like this. And you know, I'm not going for the best looking conduit job in the world here, uh, but you know, if you're doing new construction, you do want to bend the offsets because if you have a picky inspector, they can actually fail you for it. You wouldn't think they would, but it is possible, so you always want to do that. Uh, just depends on the inspector. Old work like this, it's not going to matter that much. It's just a garage too on a sub panel. It's not like it's on the main panel. Okay, since this box doesn't have a place for a ground screw, we're just going to use the, you know, the conduit or frame to ground it, which is perfectly fine. It's up to code. Uh, if it did, there would have been another wire coming out of this, just tying into the thing. If the box has that raised thing like that, it's, that's where you'll put the ground screw in, and you'll see that on these. See both the grounds are tied in on the green screws. The white is coming in on the silver screw, which is the big side of the plug, which is the neutral or grounded. The hot or ungrounded is coming in on the gold screws on the small side of the plug and then let's just jump right over to this one plug in the white and the black I always like to run these screws all the way in it's not being used I did cut the wire over here on those two uh, just to use those pigtails over here so I'm going to go ahead and get these mounted into here and then we'll look at everything in just a second I'm not going to go in as much detail on the rest of the outlet you'll see wired I just want to kind of show this and I did go ahead and pull the red wire out. There's just no need in it being here, and I can always feed another wire back through here if I ever needed to. But I think it'll be just fine. So this is going to be one circuit by itself. That way, this is a dedicator for like the welder or something. Then the other circuit will be separate for the rest of the outlets. And you just want to kind of fold the wire so when you press it in, everything just kind of folds in. You have to have at least six inches of wire coming out of the box. The code requires that. Um, I recommend, you know, more just so in case you ever got to work on something again, you got plenty of slack to work with. I like to just use an impact driver to run these screws in and get them both started. And just kind of just let it you know, start, let it tighten up until before it starts hammering. Okay, so the white or the neutral or ungrounded connect to the bus bar over here with the other neutrals. Like I said, this wire does look yellow, but it's actually white. It's just discolored for some reason. The green ties in on the grounding block over here. And your black or ungrounded, or I always call it hot wire, comes into the breaker. So now we flip it on. You can see it. The two orange ones are on, the red one's not on. So that's Exactly what we want, as you can see. 
and you want to test it kind of looks like the ribbons on but it's not it's just a glare gonna go like that it stops I always check you know all of it just to make sure so if one of these is off or the ribbons on you know you got something wired up wrong or a wire came loose if one of these is off so everything's good all right so I just got the 240 volt uh, disconnect connected up um, if you're wondering what this is for, if you're just watching this video, it's a, a lot of times I test electric motors and stuff, and it's just nice to have a, you know, 220 hookup here on a disconnect. It is tied into a 30 amp breaker that I'll keep off all the time, and I do have a lock to put on this, and just in case my nephew's that happens to be out here or something, and uh, so everything wires up pretty straightforward. I got this terminal block here. For this that way I can just hook different things up and also I have a variable frequency drive and a three-phase motor and I have uh, videos on that as well so if you're interested in that you know go back to my channel and find those and uh, but that's that I just wanted to share that with you so now we're going to run the rest of it and go from there okay so you can kind of see how this is going to go we got the conduit fitting up here, coming down to a, a pull elbow. It's called an inside corner pull elbow. You got a plate right here that comes off so you can have access to help pull it out and make it a lot easier. It's not anchored yet. I just got this spaced over here just to level. We got an anchorous box over here. And there'll be another piece going down. So we'll look at it after it's mounted. I don't want to bore you guys with the with that kind of stuff on here. So I'll go ahead and start with the box, then the conduit, and then we'll look at it when we start pulling wire. All right, so now we got all the conduit ran. And we have another receptacle right here. It comes down to that elbow. It runs all the way down through here, behind the workbench, into another box where another receptacle is going to be for the power strips on the workbench. Okay, so a little tip when you get ready to start running the conduit, cut all of them at different lengths just so that it starts easier with a small one that kind of guides the rest of them. Uh, you may not think it makes a big difference, but it actually does. So now we're going to start taping all this up. So we're pretty much ready to start running the wire now. I just wanted to show you that there is several different ways you can run wire through conduit. For a short run like this, I'm gonna try just to run it through there, just pushing it through and see what happens. Uh, you can also run a fish tape through here and hook the wire to it and just pull it straight through. And we, if we have any issues with this, we're definitely gonna try that. But I'm just trying to eliminate a step if I can, but something tells me it's just not gonna work. <laughs> They usually don't. I'm just thinking, you know, for a short run like this, maybe we'll get lucky and be able to do it the simple way or something, you know. And I just don't think it's going to work. Yeah, let's just run the fish tape and make it easy. <laughs> but if you got a real short run, you can definitely do it like that, no problem. Alright. Okay, so I got all the wire around. We got plenty to work with here. Now we'll go ahead and put the cover on. So I'm not going to hook this up on the breaker box end. That's a bad habit. Uh, you want to do all your other wiring and do this last. It's just a good habit to get into on any project like this. I'm going to leave about six inches out, cut this off, and we'll go ahead and feed the rest of it through. I'm going to do all that off camera because it's going to be the same thing. Just just another piece of pipe, so we don't need to do that. And we'll look at the, the wiring here in a little bit. I'm going to skip a little bit on here since I showed you the other wiring. We'll just look at it before I put it in the box. Okay, it's all wired here. You see we get the whites on the silver screws on the neutral, which is the big side. The blacks on the gold screws on the hot side. Got the ground coming in. I stripped the insulation back. If you can barely see, it is grounded in the box with a screw. Then it's tied together. With the wire going to the receptacle and the wire coming out and the wire coming in so everything's properly grounded so now we just got to fold the wires in and put it in and we'll look at it once together okay so i just got this one hooked up 
we get the extra red wire capped off. You can separate a wire like that if you don't need it, you know. But I just left it just in case for some reason we needed to you know, run two circuits or something off of it. So I already got it on. You can see both yellow lights are on. It's a pretty clean look. So then it runs down. Three-phase motor. And then over here to this one. Let's check it. I haven't even checked it yet. And we're good. The red's not on. It looks like it is, but it's not. Trust me. Okay, so I decided to do more of a temporary setup for the welder plug for right now. You see, I just got the six-gauge Romex exposed here. It'll be fine temporarily. Eventually, we will put that in conduit. But for right now, it'll be just fine. Let's run up to the 50-amp breaker. This is rated for 50 amps, as you can see. And uh, so it's ready to go. I just got to put this cover back on. I just wanted to show you before. Okay, so I'm going to take a quick look before I put the covers on everything. Uh, there was already wires ran over close to where the air compressor was. I traced them out. I thought they were these ones that were uh, wire nutted off, but they're not. I actually had to splice in to extend one of them on the air compressor circuit, which is just a 20 amp breaker. So now I got one single pole breaker left I can put in. This box will be full. I mean, so this is the air compressor. So that works. Here's the receptacle I'll put in for it. It's the 30, uh, 20 amp twist lock type. And it runs down to the compressor. So that's that. So we get to working air compressor now. Well guys, that concludes this video. All the wiring's done in the garage until we have to add something else. I just got to put the fire strips on there and they'll be on the video of mounting the vice and workbench accessories. So that'll be on that video. This is all of the electrical videos you'll see for a while. So uh, if y'all got any questions or comments about running conduit or anything, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So thanks for watching, guys.